So welcome back to the Money and Soul podcast. I'm here with my good friend and financial expert, Michael Feiner, and I am Rabbi Baruch Levy, Rabbi B, or just B, and we are excited to continue our conversations around money and soul. What's happening, Mike? You know, I'm just uh, so happy to have our second podcast here. I really enjoyed the first podcast. It was so thought-provoking and just realized by doing this, how big of an area this really is to explore. And it's just uh, unbelievable. It's so true. Like I said, in the last podcast, having done a little research, you know, nobody wants to recreate the wheel. Like if there's good programming out there, go for it. And there's good programming. Yeah, I just didn't find much that intersects financial and spiritual, right? It's either either or I got my podcasts. Um, I, I either listen to spiritual today or financial today. And why can't we have both? And well, that's I think what we set out to do. So here we are. I think I think you're right. So it, it, it's it's in need because we both have found that people have been asking for it for this. There seems That's to right. be a need for it. That's right. And and you know we see it. I think professionally, our um, our clients go back and forth because it's not either or. You can't live with money and without the meaning and soul, and you can't live a life of meaning and soul without the money, without the financial wherewithal. And so it's about finding, and, and like our last conversation, it's about allocating resources appropriately and, and um, having you know, enough of both in this bank, so to speak, so that you can really live this life of a balanced counterbalance. And, and I feel like that's the part of the why as we spoke about in our last podcast of what we've set out to do. And, and that's why today we're, we're shifting gears a little bit, maybe not too much. And we're talking about um, New Year's resolutions right? The power of resolve of, I love this word resolve, and I know we'll get into it, but it's not kind of sort of wishy-washy, resolution, resolute, to resolve, to have clarity. And I think that that's part of what we need more than anything else in chaotic times, in times of COVID, in times of economic up and down, resolve, to know your why, as we talked about in the last podcast, to have clarity so you can endure the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows. I wish I could improve upon that. That's it's, it's, it's so well said. I, I can relate to that because when you think about resolutions, I think of it kind of as a, my roadmap, mm -hmm. like where I'm going, you know, from point A to point B. Now, when I used to go places, you know, and I get a AAA roadmap. I remember those days you'd have those AAA roadmaps and you try to find your way from, let's say, Boston to Los Angeles with a AAA roadmap. Mm -hmm. Now you can just say, you know, hey, Siri, or hey, Google, and it's so much more efficient. But, you know, when Siri isn't working and can't tell me how to easily get from point A to point B, I get frustrated now, mm -hmm. right? Because I feel like, I'm, of course, I'm going in circles too. I can't actually get anywhere. But it's so true in life, too, that if you have clarity to your either resolutions, purpose, goals, it makes life less friction oriented or fr not to say frictionless, but it makes life almost like, hey, Siri, let's go here. I, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Um, I believe that Google Maps has saved more marriages than I or any therapist ever has or could. I mean, I'm serious. Like. I think back on the pre uh, Google Maps days when I would road trip with my wife and we would get into the biggest fights, right? The stereotypical stuff, but it would like really take its toll on the trip. It would, it would hurt the, the vibe of the trip. Yeah, but if you really think about what that's all about is they've just figured out a way to make, you know, your end state more efficient because you're going from, you know, Boston to New York City, it can either take you three and a half hours or five and a half hours, depending what route you take. That's right. And even with better technology, what traffic and what other things. Now, those are two completely different experiences. Mm -hmm. You're still going to the same place. Now, it's even worse if you don't even know you're starting in Boston, that you're going to New York City and you just start driving in any direction, which is a lot of the problem. Like, let's just drive. Yep. Let's drive, let's have purpose, let's do it. You know, how, how do you do it the best way? Which I think is what this resolution thing is about. Like, let's figure out where we're going. And then at some point, we'll probably figure out, you know, you'd like to do it in a way that is somewhat pleasurable or creates the least pain. 
So, you know, you're, you're a soldier. No, no good soldier lives their life by saying, ready, fire, aim. Um, well, unfortunately, you know, we do. Well, we do, right? Everything's about that. People in, you know, I've, you know, been guilty of this too. You, you, you take action before you have necessarily a goal or a plan. And sometimes you have to, right? You have to react naturally and instinctually. But generally with long-term, you know, goals, it's much better to have the thought and the end state set before, and, before and you yes, start. So, sometimes those goals um, revolve around things that are painful, that are emotionally, um, I don't know, challenging. I, I think my finances are, when I think of the end of the year, I think of, oh God, right? I'm going to have to, you know, get all my, my uh, tax stuff ready for, for Michael and his team. And I that means I got to look at it. And that means I got to be honest about what we've spent on and how, you know, how we've overspent in this area. And, and I, I feel pain, 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 pain. And then I don't do it. I put it off until you call me and say, hey, B, it's like June, let's get going on this thing, right? So, um, but I think that's a natural response to very difficult, challenging conversations, issues. There's no question. And as I tell people, I say, you know, as part of your New Year's resolutions, to your point, put on there that I'm going to work on my financial information or tax information once a month or once a week. So it doesn't become all of a sudden an explosion at some point, like, oh, my God, I've it's almost like getting in shape. It's like, yes. yep, uh, you know, it's coming to the end of the year. And I admit it, I always have my weight goals. You know, I want to weigh less than an amount. I never seem to ever get there. I'm sort of trending in the right direction, but I can't seem to get to the weight that I ever want to get to. It's been the same goal for like at least 10 years at this point. And so I've decided to chunk, you know, change. I had a change. Finally, I said, I've got to chunk this out monthly as opposed to have one year end weight goal. Because you know what happens at the end of the year with my weight goal? Same with your taxes. Yeah, it's, right? uh, it's as I say, it's like Miss America wishing world peace. Like, great, right? You know, like Pretty we gotta much. break this thing down. But I think that's the beauty of this time of the year in, in resolutions is that you can get the impetus to do it, whatever the calendar and the new year gives you the, the um, catalyst to create something. Sure. Now it's a question of keeping that energy going. And, and per our last podcast, it starts with why, right? It starts with kind of the fuel, the, the vision, the macro, and you got to start there. And then you got to really start breaking it down, as you said, into executable, actionable, attain, obtainable goals um, and getting clear about them. And there's so many... There's so many reasons to do that. And, and I think that uh, money is one of those things that creeps up. Although I was surprised. I, I did a little research for this conversation. I read an article in Forbes of the most popular New Year's resolutions. So maybe I'll read those off. And I'm surprised because money didn't make it. So you probably take a guess at what do you think some of the things are in there. Pretty obvious. I, I'm going to have to say, you know, the weight thing, right? I, just because that's always my, you know, biggest you know, biggest goal. Weight's up there and things are related to weight, like uh, exercising. Of right? course. So there's, actual weight, there's weight loss. There's, I'll, I'll actually just read through them. Living healthier was number one. Of course. But the, but, but the problem, again, abstract. Like, I'm not exactly sure what living healthier means because, uh, you know, I would argue that eating those veggie burger th alternatives that my wife is making me eat these days is not necessarily living healthier. I don't know. It's abstract right? Okay. Getting happier. Next one. 21. So 23% of people said living healthier. 21% said getting happier. I'm not sure people have fleshed out. Well, what do you mean getting happy? <laughs> Losing weight. You've already touched on that one. Easy to say, hard to do. 20%. Exercising. Only 7%. I would have guessed that one was higher. Stopping smoking. Um, 5%. I don't really see that many people smoking anymore, but the remaining... Smokers out there, 5% uh, of them make it a goal. Uh, New Year's resolution to stop. Reduced drinking, 2%. In addition, people resolve to meet career and job goals, improve their relationships, and so on and so forth. This was a study done by the University of Scranton, yeah. by the way. So those are the top ones. No, I think, I think that 
none of those surprise me. None of them relate to work or money per se. It's all about feeling better, having more energy, probably having, you know, more capacity to do things. And more importantly, what each of those goals tell me is exactly what, why we're here at, at this podcast. None of those goals are, have enough purpose or specificity to actually help you get there. That's right. They're just too general. That's right. And general goals don't, just don't work. General purpose doesn't work. Your purpose has to be laser beam. Just like I joke, yeah, I'm going to lose weight. I have a number, but the purpose of it is so I have more energy and health and I, I can do more of the things I want to do. I, I have more specificity to it so that every day when I wake up, it puts more meat on the bone. So let's let's start with that one because we were going to talk through and Forbes has their own um, the 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 ways to make um, the the upside of setting resolutions and the ways to make them a reality and I think you've just said one of them which is so important and, and that is that life is in the details um, the most important I do I I share this in couples counseling especially the most important relationships we have are the most detailed, they're the most nuanced, right? And it's obvious until it's not. So, you know, writing a card to somebody on their birthday that you don't know well, that's a love, that's like received like, oh my God, so-and-so thought about me. If I give that same card to my wife on her birthday, which is the generic card thinking of you, it wouldn't quite get there because my relationship with her is so much more complex and nuanced and that has to be reflected in our relationship, right? So the more nuance, the more details, the more specificity, the richer the relationship. And we know this in language. The famous example is always Eskimos. How many, lang how many words do Eskimos have for snow? I don't know, like 67 or whatever it is, because snow is part and parcel of their life, right? Right. If you live in Los Angeles, you don't have much, many, language, uh, many words for snow. You have snow and you have no snow because it's not a rich experience in their life. So I bring that to all aspects and especially resolutions. When you set a resolution, don't write one line, write a journal. Take, I have journals all over the place. Take a journal and dedicate one journal to why I'm going to lose weight, what that looks like. You know, all the, the challenges and the ups and the downs and the reasons, you could fill an entire notebook on why I'm gonna lose weight. That's a resolution. I mean, that's a beautifully said articulation because I think, you know, the, the more detail you put into it subconsciously, you'll, you'll tend to execute things. A resolution is really the first step, mm -hmm. setting something. And that's what I think where the missing part is. That's just step one out of maybe 25 steps of actually doing something, right? Okay, the thought occurred, great. Now you've got to bring that thought to, as you said, execution. And that's a lot harder to do. And if you want to have success, you've got to take the resolution and, and bring that, you know, into, into reality. And if it's through a journal or through a detailed plan or however, you know, your mind works or, or methodology, that's the, that's the key to success. Right. Setting the resolution is not going to get me to the gym. It might on, it might on January 2nd. It's not going to do it on September 2nd, unless I have a greater reason, purpose, and, and uh, why, as you always say, it's the why, like, why am I losing weight? You know, I, I could go into a bunch of ways, you know, but why aren't you doing anything? That so important. is hard. So, so, you know, you're, you're right. Like for me, maybe it's a journal, but, but also like if I'm talking about um, getting in shape, maybe it's just picking up the phone, setting an appointment with the trainer. And that's my journal because I'll spend time with him or her dialoguing, fleshing out the details or, or, you know, my financial plan, somebody picks up the phone and calls you as part of their resolution process. And maybe that's the point. And you're right. Resolve is making a decision. I love these words. Decision comes from the word incision, to cut, to make a clear divide. Yeah, I'm now going to be on the other side of that divide. I'm going to face my finances. That's the first step. The second step is then 
maybe to pick up the phone and call Michael or your financial planner and say, I need to begin a dialogue and I need you, since this is your wheelhouse, to help me flesh this thing out to get into the details. Well, I think something that you said in the last podcast really resonated with me and it really, you know, made it clearer to me, you know, what this is all about. And it could be the journal, which is probably the best way to write things down. But really what it is, is an allocation of time that you've decided for this goal by journaling, by doing other stuff, you basically allocated a lot of time to make this goal happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the resolution could take five seconds to think of it, (laughs) but you've put 20 hours of journaling, phone conversations, trainer, whatever the goal is, that's the piece that's missing. It's like, okay, we have a thought, but are you going to allocate a hundred hours of your time in 2022 or 2021 or 2023 to make that goal? A react? Like, how are you going to do that? Not so much the details, but the resources that you're going to, to do. That's right. Did you ever see, you probably did, it's not your wheelhouse, but um, there was a, a video that came out that took the world by storm. It sold like millions of copies. It's called The Secret. Remember The Secret 15 years ago or something? Oh, I actually, ironically, and since you mentioned that, a woman in Brooklyn, New York, mailed me the DVD, just random soldier when I was in Iraq, The Secret oh, wow. DVD. I sw- it talked about you know random things, and I was like, this thing looks completely crazy. She Half also the people in it ended up in jail too, by the way. Half well, of they the, may uh, have, but um, you know when you're in Iraq, and I was in between some things, and I did have a DVD player. A lot of it really resonated to me because I, I, I was I'm a big fan of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which is wow. thoughts or things, you know. But that really resonated to me. Not that all of it, but the idea that, hey, the first thing you really do have to do is have a very clear vision of the world, which I think yes. is so is so true. Yes. What they forget to tell you maybe a little bit in the secret is that what you just said is you get a lot of pieces that you've got to execute to make that a reality, but you've got to start there. Totally. So I, I love um, the first half of the equation of the secret, which is, you know, it's the, it's the first half of the equation of what we're talking about, spiritual. What, where I don't like it is that that's where they end up. And, you know, I have this conversation a lot because soul-centered attracts a lot of spiritual seekers of manifesting. They, they love the word manifesting, and I like it too, but manifesting is not hocus pocus. The universe is to me far more mathematics than it is woo-woo. So what does that mean? It's an equation. And you get out what you put in. And one of the things the secret says is invest your mind, like Napoleon Hill, our teacher says, invest your your feelings, your prayers, your meditation, invest into this focused, detailed, specific goal. Don't wish for a million dollars. Wish for $632,000 because I built out a budget and built out a business plan like you've helped me do with my work. And here's exactly why we're $632,000 or $6,032,000, whatever it is. It's not hocus pocus. It's where the rubber meets the road, where I meet the universe. That to me is interesting. I think, I think you hit upon, you know, the sweet spot of uh, my other resolution of improving my golf game, you know, I'll give the sweet spot analogy, but you know, with that, that first piece of it, or the resolution that has the specificity, what does that really do for you? And I think this is where the secret a little bit tails off, like you said, in the second half where they, you know, couldn't probably help people. The manifestation is great with the specificity, with the goals. And then it is the reason that you're doing that is that you have to make that your passion and your why so that every blinking moment you're thinking about how do I accomplish that? And which is, I know, a different part of our podcast down the road. But when you start, it's even like the discussion for this podcast. We've been talking for a while. We're doing a podcast. And then you, to your excellence, you know, puts a lot of ideas together. We flesh things out. But we have a why that we want to do it. Now we're thinking about it a lot. We're creating energy around it. We're actually doing something. Mm-hmm. And we'll probably adjust as we do things totally. as well, right? But we're doing it. The, the doing is important. There has to be some doing somewhere from the resolution. It's not going to manifest 
it's not going to be magical. You know, I wish it were. I wish there was some magic, please. It, it is magic, though. That's the point. It is magic, but it's real magic. So here, what, is a, what does a magician say when he has a, a black hat and a wand and rabbit? Right? What does he say right before he pulls the rabbit out of the hat? I don't know, abracadabra. Abracadabra. What, what? Abracadabra is Aramaic. Yeah. Aramaic is the language of, uh, of Jesus for Christians and for the Talmud, for the Jews, um, 2,000 years plus years ago. And it means avra, I will create kadabra as I speak. And from a Kabbalistic perspective, magic, speech is magic. Why? Because we've taken thought, which is it's ephemeral. Like where, what is a thought? Where is a thought? And we've made it manifest. We've taken, actually you have, according to science, 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. 80,000 thoughts. I don't, I have like six, but 80,000 no. thoughts a day. Most of them are repetitive. Most of them come and go. We choose what we choose to make manifest is what we give voice to. That's why from a Kabbalistic spiritual perspective, communication, particularly voice is the divine gift it's what differentiates us between your beautiful dog what's your dog's name apollo apollo beautiful golden retriever and he communicates in his own way but he's missing the element of speech and because of that he can only communicate so far his hopes his goals his new year's resolutions right and it's that power of speech whether you're talking to your financial planner or your spiritual guide or your um, or your fitness coach or, or your journal, but you're taking 80,000 possibilities and boiling it down to one. That's a resolution. Yeah, I, I, that's so, so well said. And I think that goes into the soul and money idea. That's, you know, if, if you want to manifest money, you better get your soul organized because this is all about your soul, right? Your mind, your spirit, your energy, that's all soul stuff. It has nothing to do with money. Mm -hmm. If you want to, the secret's kind of about that. Basically, get get your being, get your soul activated to reach your goals, right? And that intersection will help you get get the things that you want. If it happens to be money as a a piece of it or as a vehicle to whatever you want, getting That's this right. piece right first is the right order, not the other way around. Okay. If you can get this right first, your destination, your goal, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get the, you'll get your route. You'll get your Google maps, your, you know, other methodology, right? So that would be, you know, in my feeling, kind of the next step, I guess, would be, you know, resolution to get clear, last podcast to, um, to articulate, get nuanced, get specific, and then to take action, right? Yes. To take action and bite-sized actions, not macro. My, my daughter just came back from the gym. She's a teenager and she's like, there's so many people there this week. I'm like, of course there are. It's January, it's the first week of January. I said, by, new, by Valentine's day, it'll be back to empty, relatively empty. I know, cause I was a gym rat for a while. Um, health clubs bank on that literally they bank on people signing up and not showing up because if everybody showed up who signed up they wouldn't be able to operate no i i am a member of planet fitness for the big ten dollars a month i'm always amazed mathematically how that could work except that they just bank on yep everyone joining and five percent of the people showing up yep. which which is remarkable when you think about if that's the number one resolution to be healthier, according to Forbes, that's a resolution on January 1st. And that many people, 95 out of 100 basically quit, right? Going, going down the road, which tells you, well, why? what are the 5% of the people, how, how are they able to continue, but the 95 don't? And like you said, that's simply because a resolution is just one piece. Showing up the first day is one piece. The bite size purpose in being able to see the end of it may take six months or a year to actually see you don't see results unfortunately in a week or a month no that's the problem with all of these things if you could see results quickly i think it'd be a lot easier to see the why quickly sometimes the why is not quick 
it takes nope. a long time to get the get things where you need them and that's the hard part the longer it takes the harder it is i suppose so there's two things in that i, I, I want to talk about one is the long haul and enduring that enduring the the suffering but, but before that i just counseled a, a guy who um just took his family on a winter vacation to Mexico, like a big over the top, flying everybody in, like saving up for it. It'd be a big deal. And he walked away afterwards and our conversation was post Mexico. And he said, it just wasn't what I had hoped. I just wanted to give my children everything. And they didn't receive it like everything, but it's not surprising because anybody who's raised kids knows that my kid, I have four kids. My kid out there right now is here on a snow day. He um, he just wants me to spend a little time with him on a consistent basis. So like I'm canceling what I'm doing after this and we're going sledding. Oh, and that's nice. You know, he's still, I have four kids. He's the youngest. He's the last one that will want to go sledding. And so I'm, I'm mindful of that. And how many sledding opportunities did I miss in the first round with the older kids? Because I was holding out for Mexico, right? The big the big payoff, the big action. Kids don't really care so much about the big action. It's the cardboard box that the toy came in oftentimes that becomes just as meaningful to play with as the toy itself. And I just apply that to my resolutions and to guiding people through theirs. It's not the big actions. It's the little ones, right? It's not running the marathon to get into shape. It's can you commit 20 minutes every morning to walking, jogging, going to the gym, doing aerobicides, whatever the thing is, because you get lost when it's so big. I mean, we talked about that, that it's so important, I think, to break it down to actionable, manageable, doable goals. Yeah, I mean, we could do a podcast on just that piece of it, because that, like you said, enduring suffering, um, Delaying gratification may, might be the one of the more psychological terms that I've heard, you know, is sometimes the difference between being able to meet long term purpose and objectives and not is that's the isn't that really the where the rubber meets the road, you can either have gratification right now and eat, or you can not eat, you can watch jeopardy or you can go to the gym and you know, it's a lot easier to have gratification now than, than try to save it up for later. And it's the old, that old marshmallow experience mm -hmm. experiment, you know, years ago, I won't, you know, go into that. The kids who, you know, eat the marshmallow quickly or want to accumulate marshmallows. Part of that probably is natural. I suspect there's some natural ability to delay gratification and to suffer. You have a natural, you know, some people have just the ability, some natural. It's if you don't, which is most of us, how do you kind of get that? And I think it goes back to the first podcast. The thing that's going to get you through it, one of the most important things is your purpose, is your why. Mm -hmm. Every day, if you can think of your why when you wake up, because I'm trying to think of my why first thing now. This is why I'm doing it. That helps me get in the right path. I don't yeah. always succeed, but it helps give me direction. So that's such an important point. I have, by the way, my mission statement, I say every single day of my life. Sometimes I say it three times a day. Instead, I, I have a tough time with prayer. I've never really done prayer well, um, which is an interesting job hazard as a rabbi. So uh, I meditate every day, but prayer, I don't know, I struggle with it, but I, I recite my mantra, my uh, mission as a, as a prayer, and it keeps me oriented back to my why. But I say that because there's a lot that didn't make it to the mission statement, right? If everything makes it to the mission statement, nothing makes it. If everything is priority number one, there's no priority number one. And part of my work with people is helping them become honest, not optimistic, realistic, and if you're overly optimistic with these resolutions, not only are you not going to fulfill them, but you're going to lose faith in yourself. And I talk people sometimes out of resolution, so to speak. Like, do you truly want to lose weight? And everybody says, yes, I want to lose weight. No, do not do you like the idea of it, right? Wayne, uh, not Wayne, um, Napoleon Hill's teacher 
No, no, no. Napoleon Hill 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 Earl, yeah. Earl Nightingale. Did you ever listen to yes. Earl Nightingale? Earl, oh, yeah, of course. I love the best. Your, your voice is great, but Earl Nightingale's is really the best, oh, isn't it? Oh, my God. I, it's like I mean, five best octaves. I, you, you, I mean, it's just, it's perfection. Right? So, so a woman comes to Earl Nightingale and says, in their counseling or whatever he did, um, I wish I could play the violin. And he says, really? And how long have you wished that? She's like, for like 20 years. He's like, you don't wish you could play the violin. Yeah, what do you mean? I don't wish. I do wish. If you wished you could play the violin, you'd play the violin. You've had 20 years. You could have learned to play every musical instrument in the symphony over the past 20 years. You don't really, I mean, maybe it's a wish. You don't really want to learn how to play the violin. And that's okay. But don't tell yourself you want to play the violin if you're not resolute about it. Because what happens is you stop believing in yourself. I want to lose weight. I would challenge you, my good friend, Michael, do you really want to lose weight or do you like the idea of it? Because I worry that every year you're setting a resolution, you're not living up to your resolution. It's chipping away at a piece of you that says, I can't fulfill my resolution. And I think that's worse than not setting the resolution. You know, it, it, it's something I've been thinking about as I've, you know, maintained the same weight. And then of course I'll make a push at year end, hoping to, you know, get a little lower. <laughs> Just to show that I have progress, right? As opposed you, to saying, I'm okay. You're so right. It's okay. It's okay you know? No, but you're right. There's a big difference between really wanting to do something and just the thought or the idea of wanting to do. There's a huge gap. Huge. It's true of everything. Uh, yes, this is an idea. It's not something that you're having a definite purpose for. As Napoleon Hill would say, you know, is it a definite major purpose? Right. Is it how passionate, how, you know, however you want, Earl, you know, however you want to look at it, how, how badly do you really want it? Um, and, you know, that's obviously I don't want it badly enough because I can get other things done, but that one should be easier. That's almost the easiest goal I should be able to do, which is don't eat as, don't eat as many lucky charms. Right? But that's okay. I mean, what, Earl, what Napoleon would say is a definite and this is a purpose backed by a burning desire. And if the burning desire isn't there, then you don't have, you have the definite and it's a purpose, but you don't have the energy to get there. So, so just be honest about that. Yeah. And, and allocate your resources elsewhere. It, that may be exactly true. And I love that because we've talked before about energy creation and purpose. Th those are, you know, three things that go, the planets have to align for you to get where you have to go if you really want it. Right. You can't have one without the other. It's hard. You, you won't move that way, but you need all three. That's to my point, I write down my goals. Uh, I may make it a prayer after this. I love the idea of the mission as a prayer, but I can't get my energy to focus on the weight loss goal versus other goals that I successfully accomplish. And it's interesting because, you know, what is the burning desire come from? Is it I don't have enough? Why? What is that? Because like I said, a lot of people want to do a lot of things, but they can't get the burning desire to get there. And, and that's, that's okay, right? Saying, just being honest and, and taking an honest assessment of your life and saying, hey, look, I'm, it's, it's, it's a nice idea, but I don't have the burning desire and we can't have everything. And so I'm going to choose wisely and I'm going to use this New Year's resolution to be as honest as I can about what I truly want and, and, and not... Um, use it as another opportunity because we don't need one to beat myself up or to set myself up for failure because God knows we got enough of those in our lives. So, you know, part of what I do is I teach people how to say no as liberation because what you're saying is I'm just going to say no this year to making weight loss a priority. I will do my best within reason, but it is not a top five. It is not a top three. Maybe it will be, but if it is, we got to do everything else we just said prior to this. And if it's not, Give yourself a blessing of saying, no, I'm going to focus elsewhere. Okay, that's beautiful. Well, I think what, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I've obviously struggled with that to your point of um, you've got to make decisions on focus of where to put your energy and resources and not to spread it too thin. So you're right. If I'm really not going to do that, it is probably very important just to say, yep, yeah, I agree with myself that, you know, I'll do my best. I'll do what I can, but I can't put my energy to thinking or worrying about it because I've got to put my energy to something that I actually can do and get to mm -hmm. that, that also meets my why and, and my purpose. So 
I love that idea because I think I do spread myself too thin sometimes because my top five isn't exactly the top five. If I look at my list, I have like 20 things on it. And then I try to prioritize what's really the important things that I want to get to. And I, I think that taking away of, hey, maybe you need that top five so that when you're not doing something else, don't, don't waste the energy on that. Get to something that you're going to get done so that you can get to your, you don't need to do everything to get to your purpose necessarily. That's right. We're going to do a whole podcast sometime on vitamin and vitamin no, learning how to uh, have more of it in our life. And uh, Seth Godin, marketing expert, says winners always quit and quitters always win. It's about learning what to quit, right? Because you must quit the wrong things. And that's what we're talking about. No, I've, I've, I've seen that in business, at least in the financial sense, that um, successful business people quit or they know how to quit quickly. Mm-hmm when something isn't working, you know, you just kind of just made this with my weight, you know, piece, but quitting quickly is really important in life on certain things. Not, you're not quitting because you're not persistent, but knowing something is going to be a failure and not wasting energy on something that's not going to be successful is critical to redeploy your resources. That's right. That's right. So yeah. thank you for articulating that better for me because um, I'm just looking at my little notebook here because I, I keep my little, Bible. The last page is always my goals. Um, my fourth goal is my my weight, and I'm I'm going to now just basically say I'll do my best. But num- goal number four, I think I think you're right. I'm just not going to focus on that because it honestly it has been the same goal for it has to be 15 years. And, the only um, one who got me to my goal weight of course was the army because that was a lot easier in the army days right when you have to eat uh, rations and everything you know well when they you you couldn't weigh over a certain amount or else right so you literally couldn't but since then it's just interesting with that i I could do it after that it's been you know uh, a lot tougher so thank you that is now i don't say off my list but it's going to be put on page two and i'll worry about things that i can actually probably really do. Well, I think that, um, and this is probably a good place to end, but I think that I have on here responsibility. And, and that means taking responsibility of what's yours, but also taking responsibility of yours means not taking on what's not yours. I have this conversation all the time with people. Being responsible is just a, as much about not taking on what's not yours. How many parents do I work with who are trying to take on their children's stuff and simultaneously communicate to their children responsibility. But that's not responsibility. You you know, Wayne Dyer, my teacher says, it all came down to that that little song. Everybody on the radio knows the song. Here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, right? Row your boat. Don't row your neighbor's boat. Don't row your children's boat. Row your own damn boat. Because if you're rowing somebody else's boat, you're not rowing your boat. And I feel like that's what I do also in the work of of New Year's resolutions. Like, what's mine to row? And that's what we're talking about. And that's responsible of saying, hey, I, you know, I got to be in good health and as much as I can and parameters, but my responsibility are these things. That's beautiful. Responsible. No, it's, it's a beautiful time of the year to, to have a renaissance or a rebirth of some sort. To be able to, I don't know why, from December 31st to January, all of a sudden we're like in the societal mode of being able to set these resolutions. And what a beautiful thing. I think it's more beautiful if if we can do it for more than first week of January and keep the energy, let it be an energy creator to your purpose. And that's what kind of you're helping me guide me this year is to keep the momentum. I, I can make the push now, I'm pushing the boulder, but I've got to keep this momentum all year, not just make the big push now. Um, okay, well, definitely I'll end mine, you'll have final word, but we talked last podcast about water going down a hill. And that's what I see because energy, just the flow must keep going. And when water goes down a hill, if it hits a static point, it'll find its way around it. It'll keep, and we call it in the entrepreneurial pivot. Right? So it's this fine line between having a clear definiteness of purpose, a why, 
And also having, maybe this will be our next podcast, the ability to pivot, to adapt, to continue the currency where the universe takes us. Because sometimes the answer of the universe is no, right? Like I prayed and the answer was no. So I'll go this way and not being overly attached to the goal. Because sometimes that goal can be the wrong goal. Like we have to be able to pivot. I think, you know, like you said, is a great, you know, idea and theme for the pivot, the adjustment. You, you can have it, but there are many different routes to the same place. And you may think you know what the route is, but and I don't know if this is a religious quote, but I always get the thing, man plans, God laughs. Is that a, you know? It's a, it's a Yiddish thing, man tracht gut laugh. Okay, but I, you know, I, people always quote that. And it, it is true in so many ways. And, and maybe when you're younger, you think you have much more control than you really do, but you do have a lot of control on the big, big picture of your direction to where you're gonna to get to. How you get there is never, I don't know anyone who I know who thought they got there the way they thought they were gonna get there. And Absolutely. the pivoting is so the, the people who are able to pivot optimistically and take advantage of pivots are, you know, flex, you know, kind of the growth mindset oriented approach can be empowering also. So, you know, thank you for focusing on explaining resolve, resolution, and, you know, keeping at it, not just making it a, you know, as Earl Nightingale says, a wish. That's right. Wishes don't work don't. by themselves, for sure. Resol resolutions, to be resolute, to have yes. resolve, um, definite, and definiteness of purpose. I'm, I'm sad to hear that after 20 years you could be play a whole, <laughs> all of your instruments in the symphony orchestra, which is a powerful idea too. I mean, yes. that's, I'm taking that away. It's so true. If you just use your time and resources wisely, there's so much you can do and for 2022. I wish that for everyone, for you, for me, for our listeners, for the world. It's 365 days this year. I don't, it's not, I don't know, leap year, are we? Um, and we had a few days, but every day is a, such a precious resource to get to your purpose. And I hope that this time next year that everyone really has a, their purpose and has moved closer to it. I doubt it's going to be the way you think today, but you, you, you get there. And we, 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 you know, power through it. Um, I'll end with um, this Dr. Edith Eager, who wrote the book, The Gift, and another book called The Choice. She's a Holocaust survivor. She was a student of Viktor Frankl. She became a psychologist and a logotherapist on her own, right? And she um, was 40, 45 years old, and she hadn't gone to school. And she said to a friend, I can't go back to school. And this was before she became a psychologist, a doctor. Um, I'll be 50 by the time I graduate. And her friend looks at her and says, you'll be 50 anyways, right? You'll be 50 anyway. So you might as well have the, the degree. And the people who are listening to this podcast, I imagine are an older demographic, since those are the people we tend to work with. And don't let um, that next, it's going to take a year, it's going to take five years, it's going to take 20 years, right? You're going to be that age anyways. So start now. If your heart is telling you to go in a certain direction, if you have the burning desire and the de definiteness of purpose, then go for it. That's my hope and prayer for you, because you're going to be 50 or 60 or 80 or 90 anyways, you might as well realize your resolution. So yeah. one thing I'll leave with, with and that, that's helped me is get your definiteness of purpose, get your burning desire. And like I have with you, get someone who can help you, coach you, help you be accountable, help you think about it. It's not that they're gonna tell you how to do it, but just the fact that I have to talk to you about my stuff makes me think about it. It makes me focus when I ordinarily sometimes would go off track. And I'd encourage everyone to get someone who can just help them be accountable, help them focus. They may not, they, it may not even be an expert in what you're exactly doing, but I think that person who can keep help you through that and keep you to your resolutions and know what they are and say, hey, how are you doing with your weight loss? Well, I've deferred that to 2023. Well, there goes my endorsement because uh, <laughs> I think I probably would have had more people except I just talked you out of your uh, losing weight. No, and now, it, it, it helped just... me so much. No, but it's, it's a beautiful thing to say, guess what? You know, you really aren't going to do that. And you're probably right. So why 
torture yourself. And then the next thing I can say, well, what am I really trying to, to get to? Well, I really want to do this podcast. So I've got to stay on track because I can make the effort now and we can make, and I want to do it well. I want to do other things and I want to get my energy in the right place. And you help me remind me through text, through other things like, hey, focus, you're not focused, right? And wow. I love it because I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm something hitting me, I'm doing other things and I really need to do this and get that person in your life. Uh, uh, I know you're an expert coach and expert counselor and other things. And that's a hard thing to find in your life. Someone who is good at it, not just someone who can say, Hey, you know, pound you or nag you to death. I'm talking about someone who can, you know, give you that positivity to think about it and, and, and help you stay on course. I mean, that's right. it's, it's a remarkable resource. That's right. To live out your resolutions, not somebody else's or society's for you. But what is yours? What is your truth? Walk that truth in this lifetime. So yeah. that's right. And I, I, I give you that kudo because you are so good at that. And I'd recommend to anyone who needs that to talk to be um, in the sense of is obviously have a spiritual expertise, but just his ability to guide, coach and, and, and things it is remarkable. Right. So you know, thank you for doing that for me. And it, it, it it's helped me so much with, with, I always think I was a pretty focused person, but I realized not as well as I thought, and I can be doing it a lot better into more meaningful things. So thank you. Coming from the general and from you, that means a lot. So thank you. Um, so we have now six more podcast episodes I've written down here. So this thing is growing exponentially. So to our uh, growing tribe of money and soul seekers, we thank you for tuning in and we hope you continue the journey with us and we will talk to you on the next podcast.